Now time for interactive. Follow us on X at Sportsmax Zone for Instagram and YouTube. Our handle Sportsmax TV Live. Watch, like, comment, and share, and we'll react to your questions and comments during the show. So, world champion Sharika Jackson is among 11 nominees for the Women's Athlete of the Year. We asked, does Jackson have a shot at winning the title? Let's see what you said. I.E. Iristi, Sharika had a good season, but Faith had an exceptional season, so I think Faith will get it. Dwayne Prescott, the note, congratulations. Dolores says, yes, Sharika does. Paulette, she has a good shot and it would be great if she wins. Lance, well, her chances? Not very good because of Faith Kipiegon. Yes. Faith Kipiegon broke world records in 15 mile, 5,000. World championship double gold medalist. Hard to beat Faith Kipiegon. She's, she's odds on favorite to win. So because of that, Sherika is not expected to win. But it'll be beautiful if she does. Of course it would but, be, yes. but But do you ever wonder what the, the judges' requirements are? It's the weight of your performances. Okay. Just the weight of your performances. And although Sherika had a good season, Faith Kipiegan's season was beyond, beyond successful. Okay. It was, it was amazing. Three world records in one year and three <laughs> different events. Yeah. That's, Top that's, that's unstoppable, yeah. Okay, while well, we're still talking track and field, double sprint world champion Noah Lyles posted this on X. I feel like there should be more awards given than just Athlete of the Year. What about Performance of the Year, Athlete of the Year for jumps, throws, distance and sprints, most improved athlete? Mm. Well, that would be a lot of prizes, a lot of prize money, I think. I think he has a point though. I understand what he's I, saying. Yeah, I think he has a point because um, in, a lot of, in a lot of track and field championships that we see, um, there are separate awards, you know, for, for performance of a meet or, you know, athlete of a meet. And um, I, I, think, I think the, 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 the multidimensional aspect of track and field that stretches across so many different disciplines um, makes his point strong. So I, I think he has a good point. I, I would agree with him. Yeah, I understand the point too, because sometimes it's difficult to just give an award to one person. Yeah. Um, it, it's obvious that the overall Athlete of the Year award is the prized event. It's the event that everyone would want to win and it would carry the biggest um, prestige and so on. But I think there's room for secondary prizes. But what I also understand is these prizes come with a lot of money and financial obligations. And sometimes, mm. you know, it's difficult to get so many people on board consistently. Yeah. So like, it's probably easy to just pull whatever money you get and give it to one person, I, one prize. I understand it, but I think, I think Noah Lyles has a point. I think he has yeah, a point. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. Mm. But I also understand the financial obligations. The universe boss. Chris Gale posted this on X after Rohit Sharma broke Gale's record for the most sixes in international cricket and this happened earlier today. So this is what Chris Gale has to say to Rohit. Congrats, most sixes in international cricket, hashtag 45 special. <laughs> so they, <laughs> they both have 45. Yeah. But yeah, today Rohit Sharma was brilliant with the bat lands, looking at him in the World Cup match against Afghanistan. Yeah. To be honest, before he got to 50, I tweeted Rohit Sharma in a fire emoji because I was just enjoying watching him bat, right? And then he went on to, of course, get the century. So, mm. what a thing. Wh who's, uh, whose number it is? I hear our producer telling us that it's someone else's number. Oh, I prefer not to repeat what he said. He's a very controversial person. <laughs> the, the producer and the name that he's telling us. <laughs> but good that Chris Gale offers congrats to Roy Sharma, who breaks his record, which I guess is kind of um, normal. It's a sporting thing to do when someone breaks your record to be among the first to congratulate him. So Chris is showing um, uh, good sporting culture. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So 
Tennis great Rafael Nadal tweeted the following upon Melbourne director Craig Tilly, revealing on Wednesday that he expects Rafa's return to take place in the Australia Open. So Rafa tweeted this, I appreciate the vote of confidence from the Australian Open. I am practicing every day and working hard to come back ASAP. Mm. What say you? Well, everyone would like to see Rafa Nadal back. The Australian Open is three months away. It usually starts, like, I think the third week in January. So he has time to get himself ready. But I think his body is, is, is um, letting him down and he's not getting any younger. So it's hopeful that he would be at the Australian Open. And I think based on his response, it is a target for him. And he would want to return for the season's first Grand Slam in Australia. So let's see if it happens. We miss, we miss Rafa. Yeah, and as he said, he's, he's working on himself and working on his craft and of course his body. So we're looking forward to because the Australian Open is of course better with Rafa in it. Yeah. The storylines, the competition, all of that. Yeah, but the, the, the thing is though that um, Novak has put himself now on the pinnacle and uh, Alcaraz as a young buck is presenting himself as a challenge to the number one position. He did hold the number one position briefly this year, I think. But um, the Australian Open may tell us a lot. Yes. You know, it may tell us a lot. Let's see how um, Djokovic um, performs there as the world's best and quite, well, many people accept now that he's the greatest of all time. I know the Federer fans don't like to hear that, but um, I hear non-Djokovic fans suggesting that Djokovic is the greatest of all time which is quite gracious of them. Yeah, well, we're getting ready to leave our viewers, but yeah. we can't leave them without reminding them that the West Indies women will be up against Australia in the second ODI next. And we're looking forward to see what happens. Mm. Um, we're getting news from Melbourne that there's rain and the start is delayed. The first ball should have been bowled at 6.05 Jamaica time, 7.05 Eastern Caribbean time. So um, apparently it will not start as early as we thought it would, but the game is on. It's just that there is a rain delay and the match is not expected to start in the next five or six minutes, as was projected. So uh, stay with Sportsmax and uh, see what happens there. Monitor the rain and the updates coming from Melbourne. And uh, let's hope uh, we get a game on tonight. And let's hope Hayley Matthews plays. Did you uh, get a chance to check? I'm sure the team would have been named, but because we've been on air, yeah. we didn't we didn't get a chance to Well, check. sometimes when there's a rain delay, depending on how much rain there is, they wouldn't have had the toss. And usually mm -hmm. the toss, the teams come out with a toss. So maybe it is that the teams haven't been presented yet. So there's some time yet <laughs> for us to wait. But you're watching Sportsmax. You stay with Sportsmax and you can follow um, the rain delay and if the match starts and then we'll see if Haley plays. Yeah, well, at this point we're out of time for our show, but you can catch the repeat, stay with us as Lance said, and we'll be back tomorrow. Same time, same place.